Yo guys, Superior David here. Blizzard has revealed all the Death Knight cards we'll be receiving in the new expansion. So I thought today I'd give you my thoughts on what I think are the best Death Knight cards. Generally speaking, Death Knight cards seem, you know, pretty powerful and you know, generally just overtuned relative to the uh, cards from other classes. Similar to how Demon Hunter was just like absolutely bonkers on release. But Death Knight cards aren't as simple to evaluate due to Death Knight's rune mechanic, which, you know, limits what cards you can and more importantly, cannot put into the same deck. So for this reason, I expect a lot of diverging opinions on these Death Knight cards. And, you know, we'd just love to hear what you guys have to say about these cards down in the comments. While you're at it, might as well like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because it just goes a long way in supporting, like, just what I do here on the channel and, you know, helps get the videos out into the mystical YouTube algorithm. But anyways, let's get into these bonkers Death Knight cards. First up, we've got, uh, fittingly enough, one of the first revealed cards for Death Knight, and that is Patchwork. He is a 7 mana 4-6 battle cry, destroy a random minion in your opponent's hand, deck, and battlefield. This is not going to go into every Death Knight deck, but I think Patchwork will, will be a really uh, just annoying tech card to deal with because he sort of punishes these strategies that have been really popular in Hearthstone lately, where you build your deck around like a handful of key minions. Being able to, uh, you know, s uh, snipe stuff in your opponent's deck and battlefield can just dis do a lot of like disruption and really just mess up what your opponents are trying to do in the game. So I think that in itself is very powerful. But then on top of all this, uh, Patrick only needs you to have one blood rune equipped to just play him. And this is going to be a common theme you see recurring on uh, on this list here, where these one um, rune cost cards, I think, are going to just be really the ones you want to keep an eye on. I think just the fact that you can like splash this card into a variety of Death Knight decks is going to make it just very powerful, very popular. And then in the case of Patchwork, he's just going to be very annoying when he comes down and just, just destroys your wing condition that's just chilling in your hand or deck. Like I already see the troll and highlights incoming for this card. Next up, we've got Rune Forging, which is a one mana shadow spell, draw a weapon, spend a corpse to reduce its cost by one. This card does a lot of things that I like. First, it tutors up a weapon. I think the Death Knight weapons are, you know, varying levels of power, but being able to tutor in Hearthstone is typically pretty good. And then to get the mana cheating on this card, all you need to do is spend a corpse. So that's just like one use of your hero power and then boom, you got mana cheating on this. But what really elevates this card for me is that it's not in a specific rune. So you could run this card in theoretically like every kind of Death Knight deck. Will you want to do that? I'm not really sure. I think it remains to be seen like how efficient Death Knight's card draw really is. So, you know, it might be at a point where like maybe Death Knight is so good at drawing cards, you might not even need this tutor effect because they could just turn through their deck so fast. But traditionally in Hearthstone, tutor effects are pretty good. Mana cheating is pretty good. One mana spells are pretty good. So I think uh, Rune Forging has got a lot going for it. And I think the sky's the limit. It just depends on what kind of weapons Death Knight gets going forward. And speaking of weapons, uh, next up, we've got the Soul Breaker. This is a three mana, three, two weapon. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, gain two corpses. Now, I think it remains to be seen, like, how hard is it going to be to gain corpses? I think some forms of Death Knight will be able to do it much more efficiently than others, but this is a one blood rune cost card, so it's going to be able to go into a number of Death Knight decks, and I think being able to increase your corpse count without having to have minions on the board die, I think will be very good. In my mind, this sort of just feels like a corpse ramp card, where if you, like, clear off a minion, which, you know, that generates tempo, that you, you also gain some corpses, which can just fuel some of your late game bombs, and so this feels good to me for that reason but then like say you're in a matchup like maybe a bit of a slower matchup where like your opponent maybe won't play minions that's okay because then this becomes just three mana send six damage face which i feel like that's going to be pretty good for some of these death knight decks too and so even though the soul breaker you know it isn't the flashiest card in death knight's arsenal the fact that it can you know gain you corpses and sort of just enable some of your uh you know corpse payoff cards i think that's going to make this card very powerful and definitely going to be seen in like probably most uh decks that are going into blood rune now taking things back to spells here we've got icy touch which is a one mana frost spell and it deals two damage to an enemy and freezes it. The immediate comparison that comes to mind here is Frost Shock, which is a shaman spell that, you know, hasn't really seen too much play, I think, but Icy Touch is basically twice as good as Frost Shock because it deals two versus one damage, and Death Knight has some nice Frost Synergy payoffs that, you know, sort of revolve around bursting your opponent down. So I think for that reason, Icy Touch, I think it's gonna be really good in, in those Frost decks, but because this card can go into any Death Knight deck, I think you're probably gonna see it in, like, some Blood Control decks, which will probably use this card as, like, a stall tool, but, you know, the damage base is also nice. I could also see this maybe seeing play in, like, a more aggressive Death Knight deck that would use this to either like, you know, ship damage face or like as like burst damage or potentially just like as a little tempo tool to like freeze a minion on the board that you can just sort of uh, ignore then and go face with your little dudes. So it's going to show up in a lot of Death Knight decks and uh, in Frost and potentially Blood, I think it's going to put in a lot of work there. Now, finally, we have ourselves our first undead uh, Death Knight card, and that is the Meat Grinder. This is a three mana, three, four. So, you know, Spider Tank stats, Battle Cry, shred a random minion in your deck to gain three corpses. Now, I think this is going to really shine in any sort 
sort of like aggressive based undead death knight deck where the cost of like shredding a minion from your deck is going to be very minimal because this style of death knight decks will probably run a very cheap low to the ground curve so you'll probably shred like a one drop a two drop not really that big of a deal and being able to get those corpses though i think will be a quite a big deal because the undead death knight cards seem to be very much based around like spending corpses and gaining corpses so being able to get more corpses early on is going to allow you to just hit those corpse payoff cards much earlier in the game definitely uh keep an eye out for this card when you're building your undead death knight decks so keeping these minions a roll in here we got ourselves the chill fallen baron this is a three mana two two undead battle cry and death rattle draw a card being able to draw a card twice you know seems pretty nice the first time you you draw a card you know that's a battle cry so it's pretty fast the second time it's a death rattle so it is going to be a bit slower but three mana draw two cards that seems like the standard for hearthstone right now but in the case of death knight this being a minion i think makes it just very premium because not only are you drawing two cards but you also have a minion that could die off and then just fuel your corpse counts and the fact that it has no specific rune attached to it means you could play it in every single death knight deck i think it remains to be seen how good death knight's uh, draw package will be but i think the chill fallen baron is going to be a good starting point and you're going to want to run him in most decks just because again draw two cards fuels your uh corpse count and then hey you know it's got some undead synergy there so that could be quite nice as well now next up we've got a few cards that I, i'm going to talk about all at once because i think these are all going to be good for the same reason and that is these like series of like one frost rune cost uh frost spells that i think are just all very powerful first up we got the glacial advance which is deal four damage your next spell this turn costs two less so you know that's damage that could go face it's got mana cheating attached to it for your uh, for whatever your next spell is it doesn't need to be frost that's pretty good and then you got the remorseless winter which is a uh, deal two damage to all enemies so this does go face as well as like hits hit minions but then on top of that you could draw a card so this is basically just better consecration and then we've got howling blast which is a three mana frost spell deal three damage to an enemy and freeze it and then you deal one damage to all other enemies this is basically just like a cheaper version of swipe which saw play in like every druid deck so that seems pretty good and then we've got defrost which is a two mana spell draw a card and then you spend two corpses to draw another and i think this uh you know condition to have the two corpses is going to be very easy to meet in any death knight deck so this is always going to be two mana draw two cards unless you're playing this on like turn two these cards are just all freaking amazing and the fact that like they're only one frost room means like you could still go double blood double undead and then just go one frost to get in these super powerful spells that i think will just be good in like pretty much like every kind of death knight deck just because pretty much all of them go face except for the defrost which you know draws cards but it's a super efficient draw spell at drawing two so i wouldn't be surprised if eventually one of these cards goes from like one frost rune to two frost runes maybe even like two of these cards because they just seem so nuts to me i can't be i don't th i don't think i'm crazy for saying this i look at these all and they're just like i'm just like wow yeah this one's powerful that one's powerful and that one's powerful and they only cost one frost rune so they honestly just scare me a lot so definitely keep an eye out for these uh day one of the expansion now enough of the frost rune fangirling from david here uh we're moving on to no muncher which is a six mana five six one cost blood rune minion taunt lifesteal at the end of your turn attack the lowest health enemy now this card just seems so freaking nuts to me like this is going to be really good in like just a number of uh death knight strategies like they seem to be pushing like a like a hand buff strategy with death knight which focuses on like buffing the attack of creatures no muncher is going to be nuts in that because you could just get a bunch of attack on this card and you'll be able to ship this damage face because this attacks the lowest health enemy so if your opponent's face is the lowest health enemy it just ships damage face it feels like the new zeliax in a way because you know it has like taunt and lifesteal attached to it but then it also has a way to impact the board immediately because it uh at the end of every turn it attacks the lowest health enemy so you know it could clear off a minion on your opponent's side of the board or again what zilliax could not do it could go face which it just seems ridiculous to me i cannot wait to play this card against a priest when they have no minions on the side on their side of the board and just ship that damage right at their face very excited for that keeping with the theme of powerful one blood rune minions we've got the noxious cadaver this is a one mana one two undead battle cry deal two damage to an enemy and your hero now this is probably one of the best one drops ever printed this is basically like a power crept uh you know whatever the uh archer is the one mana one one that deals one damage this is basically just twice as good and this being one mana i feel like has a number of implications for death knight being a one mana minion means it's going to be able to basically contest pretty much like any one drop your opponent can drop on turn one because it deals two damage so you know trog on one gamers better watch out because not just cadavers gonna be sniping your trogs left and right and then this card is gonna be very easy to like weave into a curve if you're trying to like burst your opponent down with like like burn this card will be very good for just getting in that like little bit of extra damage and it's so efficient at one mana and then because this is death knight after all being able to get a one drop down on turn one feels just relatively premium for the class because when it dies you're gonna get yourself a corpse so you have the added benefit of like having this awesome effect 
effect on turn one. And then when your opponent clears it off, you gain a corpse very early in the game, which can help you get like some of your powerful uh, corpse cards off on curve. And so yeah, even though Noxious Cadaver, it deals two damage to you. I don't think you're gonna really mind it too much. And I think this is just one of the best one drops ever printed. And the only thing that's really holding it back is the one blood rune. But because it is one blood rune after all, you could play this in all, just a lot of different Death Knight decks. So you're gonna be seeing this card a lot because it's just so easy to flex in to uh, Death Knight decks because of that one blood rune. And finally, we have what I think will be the best Death Knight card, and that is the Body Bagger. This is a one mana, one three, undead minion. Battle cry, gain a corpse. Now, like many of the cards I feel like I've been talking about today, this is not one of the flashiest cards in Death Knight's arsenal, but the ability to gain a corpse early in the game on turn one seems really powerful and just paramount to getting off some of your corpse effects on curve. And then because, you know, this is a one mana, one three, it's a pretty, uh, you know, uh, advantageous stat line. It's gonna be able to trade efficiently. There's some cards that have synergy with undead minions, so you can like potentially even buff this to get just even more like uh, just uh, snowball and uh, tempo going on on the board. And then similar to the Noxious Cadaver, this comes down on turn one. So, you know, not only does the Body Bagger gain you a corpse with its battle cry, but you know, when it dies off, it's gonna gain you another corpse anyways with its own body. So it's basically gonna like one mana gain you two corpses when it dies. So that seems pretty nuts to me. And the fact that this has no uh, rune attached to it means it's gonna see play in every Death Knight deck. And so again, this isn't the flashiest card by any means, but I think it's just an incredible enabler for the Death Knight class that again, we'll see play in pretty much like every Death Knight strategy. So, you know, definitely make sure to include this in your decks when you're playing Death Knight day one, because I think it's just gonna be an all-star card all around. And so there you have it. Uh, those are what I think are gonna be the best Death Knight cards when the class releases with the new expansion on December 6th. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And of course, if you made it this far in the video, make sure to like and subscribe because if you made it this far, you're probably digging something I'm doing. And I guess in the meantime, stay superior and I'll catch you next one later. Get that food off.